Since defending my PhD in astrophysics, I've worked with hundreds of young adults who are in a deep crisis of faith. They resonate with me because I also did not grow up with religious conviction. Their conflict may have started with an uncomfortable challenge to their beliefs. Like, how can they believe in God when there's so much evil in the world? Or from watching atheists on social media laugh at the absurdity of the Bible for not following the scientific method. But what if the key to navigating that conversation isn't in theology? What if it's in game theory? The masters of debate know you do not win by fighting on their turf. Rather, you reframe the entire interaction. I realized that by applying a simple logical framework before I even engage, I could often diffuse the argument and reveal a deeper truth. It's a three-step conviction-first approach. But knowing this framework isn't enough. How can you use these three steps to transform from constantly feeling like you're defending your faith into someone on a mission to reveal its truth? My name is Dr. Yosef Wolf, and my mission is to help logical thinkers build unshakable conviction by revealing the unity between modern science and ancient wisdom. This isn't just about winning arguments, it's about building conviction. When I pivoted from being an academic researcher with an astrophysics equation named after me because I solved a seemingly impossible problem, I wasn't running from these challenges, I was running toward the source code for the deeper truth that I found in yeshiva. And what I discovered is that our approach to confrontation is often backward. We try to answer a specific question rather than a specific person. And that is the key to handling almost every single uncomfortable challenge you will ever face. It's a three-step process, foundation, reframe, and reveal. Before you engage with any challenge, the first step is to calm your own mind. This isn't about plugging your ears. It's about logic. Your emotional conviction must be rooted in the foundational truth of the Bible itself. This is what we call the Kuzari principle. It's the unshakable argument of evidence that bests criteria used even by modern historians, that we have an unbroken 3,300 year old chain of tradition of a national revelation, an entire nation witnessing God reveal himself at Mount Sinai. We are the only nation in human history to claim a national public revelation. When your conviction is based on that, a specific question from a skeptic doesn't shake the entire building. It's just a question about the pink color in one room. I go into the details of the Kazari principle in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the info card above and in the description below. It truly is the bedrock that anyone with faith needs to not just understand, but be able to confidently express on their own. But just because your mind is calm and clear, what if you can't figure out how to actually beat their arguments? The idea of first building a logical foundation is the core of my work. I'm exploring all of this in my new book on Torah and science. If you want an exclusive sneak peek and to receive my latest weekly insights, I've put a link to my newsletter below the subscribe button in the pinned comment. It's the first place I share this new research. Now for the argument itself. My first move isn't to answer the detail. It's to understand the person and to put myself in their vantage point. Don't get caught in the weeds. Ask where they are coming from. Often the challenge comes from a place of genuine moral outrage. How can God allow so much suffering? Religion causes so much war. This is where you find the fallacy or the hypocrisy. And you point it out, not with aggression, but with genuine curiosity. After slowly counting to three in your head and embracing the silence, ask them calmly. It's clear you're upset about suffering and killing. I am too. But if you don't believe in God, where is that powerful moral standard coming from? 
Perhaps their objection is coming from a traumatic event in their upbringing, where their lashing out against religion is really a masked attempt to fight an unfinished battle that has nothing to do with you. If they say that their moral standard is from people or from society, then their argument is subjective and can change in one moment. For example, the Nazis, one of the most civilized and enlightened cultures of their time, had strict laws protecting animals from cruelty, while simultaneously legalizing the torture and murder of an entire group of people. If morality is subjective, their standard is just as valid as yours. The very outrage they feel is their soul's proof of a higher objective moral law, a lawgiver. You're not arguing against them, you're showing them how their own heart already agrees with you. But what if the challenge is from science? The Bible is wrong about the age of the universe. Science disproves the Torah. This is my favorite one, because here we just have to look at the data and the history. Science isn't a static book of facts. It's a process run by people, and people get things wrong. The prevailing scientific thought of the day has repeatedly been against the Bible only to have science catch up centuries later. They said the universe was eternal until we discovered the Big Bang just 61 years ago, confirming the Bible's very first sentence, in the beginning. They scoffed at ancient scholars, but as I've shown in some of my other videos, those same scholars knew facts about modern astronomy, like the true nature of the Pleiades star cluster thousands of years before modern telescopes, or the Talmud's prediction of the number of stars in the universe. As science progresses, the gap doesn't widen, it closes. We see more evidence for intelligent design, not less. This isn't a God of the gaps of ignorance. It's what I call a gap of confidence. We have the confidence that as science continues to evolve, it will only reveal more of the deep divine unity I'm always talking about. I'll link my videos on ancient astronomy and the age of the universe in the info card and in the description. You can also check out my whole playlist of weekly insights that delve into this deep ocean of unexplored parallels between Torah and science. If there's a burning question you haven't been able to solve yet, let me know in the comments. I will try my best to answer your conflict between religion and science. And if you haven't done so already, please share this video. You never know who in your life needs to hear this exact message. This three-step approach, secure your foundation, reframe the premise, and reveal the confidence, isn't just a debate tactic. It's the embodiment of my mission, to help logical thinkers build unshakable conviction by revealing this hidden unity. Academia and society pressure us to choose, intellect or faith. But it's a false choice. They are two halves of a single Mobius strip, a magnificent blueprint for reality. So if you're part of an organization, a school, a synagogue, a community group, or a parent worried about their child, and you're seeing people you care about struggle with these questions, I'm available to speak. I've spent over a decade developing unique techniques for reaching young adults in crisis, and I would love to work with your community. My email is in the more info section of my channel. The ultimate why for all of this is what the mystics teach. They explain that when we reveal the deep hidden unity in the world, especially the unity between secular and the holy, we are actively doing the work of healing the perceived fractures in our world. We are revealing the ultimate singular truth that will ultimately be known to all in the days of Mashiach. This channel exists for every rationalist who has ever felt that crisis of faith. It's about arming yourself with the facts and the frameworks to build true conviction. If you want to dive deeper into the science, click here to see how relativity and quantum mechanics agree with the Bible's age of the universe. Or you can check out my four minute playlist on the unexplored parallels between Torah and science on the weekly Parsha. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's find this truth together.